In the period after the Second World War, there were two major oil crises. The first occurred in 1973 when the Arab members of OPEC decided to quadruple the price of oil to nearly $12 per barrel. The spark was the Yom Kippur War, when a coalition of Arab states led by Egypt and Syria launched a surprise attack on Israel on the holiest day of the Jewish calendar. In that war, the Soviet Union supplied its allies Egypt and Syria, while the United States responded with a massive airlift to aid Israel. After President Richard Nixon's decision to provide Israel with emergency aid of $2.2 billion to support the Yom Kippur War, the Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries enacted an oil embargo against the USA. This effectively halted the export of Arab crude oil to the USA, followed by a series of sharp production cutbacks. In addition to rising prices, there was a shortage leading to rationing at gas stations and long lines of cars waiting to refuel. Some consumers tried to stock up on gasoline and related goods, which further exacerbated the situation. To replace Arab oil, the USA had little spare capacity to increase production. Even with rising oil prices, the time and capital required to develop new fields and bring new wells online could take years. OPEC eventually lifted the embargo in March 1974, but higher oil prices persisted, leading to an overall increase in inflation. Like most economic events, the 1973 energy crisis and subsequent inflation were caused by multiple factors, not just U.S. support for Israel. There had been an ongoing struggle for control over the global oil market between the governments of oil-producing countries and major U.S. oil conglomerates. Until the 1970s, OPEC formed in 1960 conducted relatively restrained activities, mainly negotiating with international oil companies for more favorable terms for its member countries. OPEC saw the Yom Kippur War as an opportunity to demonstrate its geopolitical power and strike at the U.S. oil giants. Inflation was also caused not solely by high energy prices. In the U.S., commodity prices had been rising at about 10% per year since 1970, and inflation had been on the Federal Reserve's radar as something to be closely watched even before 1973. The oil embargo only exacerbated the situation and accelerated inflation. The then chairman of the Federal Reserve, Arthur Burns, argued in 1979 that this period of high inflation was the result of the confluence of several external forces in addition to the embargo, including liberal financing of the war in Vietnam and currency devaluation. Besides the inflation caused by the energy crisis, the U.S. economy was in a state of stagnation. This led to the unusual combination of rising prices and economic downturn known as stagflation. The embargo lasted only a few months, but the high oil and energy prices persisted throughout the 1970s. One of the side effects of this was the reduction of the national speed limit to 55 miles per hour, which was then considered the most fuel-efficient speed for automobiles. Another unusual consequence was the extension of daylight saving time in the U.S. from 1974 to 1975, which, according to the Nixon administration, allowed for the saving of 150,000 barrels of oil in heating expenses during the winter months. In fact, several laws aim at supporting domestic oil production and creating strategic oil reserves for emergency situations were adopted in the mid-1970s. Another energy crisis occurred after the Iranian Revolution, which began in early 1978 and ended in early 1979 with the fall of Shah Mohammad Reza Pahlavi, the country's monarch. And rest in Iran, the largest oil exporting country, led to a significant reduction in global supplies of crude oil, causing noticeable shortage and a surge in panic buying. Within 12 months, the price per barrel of oil nearly doubled to $39.50. 
Short-term disruptions in global supplies of gasoline and diesel fuel were particularly acute in the spring and early summer of 1979. Several states responded with gasoline rationing, including California, New York, Pennsylvania, Texas, and New Jersey. In these densely populated states, consumers could only buy gasoline on alternate days, depending on whether the last digit of their license plates was even or odd. The gasoline shortage also led to concerns that there might not be enough heating oil in the winter. This prospect was particularly worrying for the New England states, where the demand for domestic heating fuel was the highest. In the face of the crisis, politicians actively called on consumers to save energy and limit unnecessary travel. In the years that followed, the 1979 crisis led to the sale of more compact and fuel-efficient cars in the U.S. These smaller cars had smaller engines and provided better fuel economy. Moreover, the crisis spurred utility companies around the world to look for alternatives to crude oil generators, including nuclear power plants, and governments to spend billions in research and development of other fuel sources. Collectively, these efforts led to a reduction in daily oil consumption worldwide for six years following the crisis. Meanwhile, OPEC's share of the world market fell to 29% in 1985 compared to 50% in 1979.